The planet literally has a ton of questions about Otter Creek. Like, after the town hall meeting, are Lynette and Russ the Sus getting it on? Hey, Russ. you need anything else from me? I'm gonna guess no, because they're not related. But if they were kin, it'd be a whole different story around here. Wade Higgins says, hey, I'm a little bit confused. Seriously, this whole thing is confusing. How many violations of a civil protection order does one have to have before the Florida State Attorney will consider that civil protection order has been broken? Or will there ever be a point that Ohio courts can issue an arrest warrant against John Crook and Lynette? Well, Lynette literally just moments ago broke the civil protection order again. She utilized social media to try and communicate with us. Okay. Now understand that our videos are not geared towards her, for her, or anything along those lines. Our videos are to share the story of our lives. As a matter of fact, to see and hear the story of our lives, you have to click on a video. You have to actually go out of your way to get on your device or your TV or your phone, find what the hails, click on the video. You actively have to watch it, which there's no doubt she has because she has publicly now posted a response stating, uh, just FYI, <laughs> I've been uh, dyeing my hair purple for several years now. Uh, so yeah, no. Exactly, that's what she's saying. So yeah, no. Complete and total response to our videos, okay? Because someone asked her about her hair color. Do you realize she, is lying about not watching the videos and now here she is breaking the civil protection order again she's posting just to communicate with us which is a breach and a violation of the civil protection order so will florida do anything about it that's a great question uh we are pushing them legally to do something about it will ohio do something about it absolutely 100% Ohio will not play games with these two any longer. And they didn't play games with them in the beginning. So it's up for grabs. Who's going to do something first? Will Ohio move forward first? Will Florida move forward first? Will Ohio push Florida to move forward first? One way or another, the breach and the violation and the breaking of the civil protection orders, they will reap those consequences. And keep in mind, everybody reaps consequences or blessings in their lives based on what they say, what they do. In this particular instance, she broke the civil protection order again. She made communication through social media on purpose targeted towards us. So she will not have a blessing. She will reap the consequence of breaking that civil protection order. And yet again, perjure herself in court, stating she's only watched, you know, maybe four videos, maybe five. The reality is every single one of our videos. Kimberly Boyd says, hey, hold a second. Where's Madam Mayor? Uh, did she quit? Did they fire her? Well, they did not fire her. In all reality, the only person that could fire a mayor in a town in Florida is the governor, and that didn't happen. Now, the other thing that you could do is you could actually vote in, during election time, other members who, then those council members out of the five seats, they vote who out of the five they want to be mayor. But what happened is she and her husband, they had a a campground and a beautiful little campground here in Otter Creek. Honestly, one of the best properties that you could actually find here in Otter Creek. And they put a lot of blood, sweat, tears, a lot of labor, a lot of money into developing this and creating a even more, more profitable, more uh, beautiful space for people to actually reside. And so their dream was to actually do the exact thing that they were offering to all of their residents. They wanted to go out and travel in their camper or an RV and experience the world. So many people who come through, they stay for a little bit or they stay in Snowbird. So what they did is they put the they put the uh, park up for auction. No, not auction. Yeah, no, no, they put it up for sale. Uh, there was no auction. If there was an auction, we probably would have been all over it. Now. 
there is a rumor out there that we purchased it. We did not purchase it, okay? So they put it up for sale, and now they are out on the road and they're traveling. We know they want to spend some time in Alaska. We know they want to spend... Uh, they just spent this week uh, at another place, at another another um, military base. They, they like the military bases. So what they're out doing right now is... They're living their best life, and that's what we all want, right? We all want to invest in something, build into something, pass it on like they have, and then live out our best life, having fun and enjoying it. And now they get to do that. They're in retirement. Don't forget Form 6 push that dream quicker. So that's the other thing. So like George and I, we had a dream when George and I first met. This is no joke. Uh, this is no exaggeration. This is reality. When we first met, we met in a Buffalo Wild Wings and we met on July 27 and we were in booth 86 and one of the things we talked about was like, hey, we both wanted to move to Florida and snowbird. And from get-go, just knowing each other, whether there was going to be another date or not, we both shared that dream together. The catalyst to make that dream happen was COVID. And we went, oh my goodness, and we can't cancer. believe it. Cancer, cancer was another element mm -hmm. that was a catalyst that pushed that dream faster than we actually anticipated. So you had COVID and cancer, and all of a sudden we went, you know what? We're getting to Florida. We're not getting any younger. We're getting older. And if we're going to do it and we're going to live our best life, we're going to do it now. Little did we ever know this is what life was going to be like in Florida. So we don't, <laughs> we don't hold it against Madam Mayor for going, hey, you know what? Form 6 came along, and now everybody who sits on a seat on council has to fill out Form 6. You have to declare and expose everything you own that's over $1,000. For me, I would need a professional CPA to, to do that, to evaluate everything, to write out everything. And even then, if it's wrong, I can still face up to fines of $20,000 per offense. No thanks. Don't want anything to do with that, nor do I want my public information out there. I have enough, you know, enough people trying to get money from me on a daily basis, stealing it from me, like Russ the Sus, uh, Lynette, Crook, begging. And so I don't need everybody out there, and this is public information, the planet literally can get all of that information on Form 6 and know everything that you're worth and where it's at and the whole deal. And she said, you know what? That's a huge invasion of privacy. And instead of an invasion of privacy, I'm going to go live my life the best that I possibly can. And we're thrilled for them. Barbara Peter says, I don't blame you one bit for suing the state or Levy County for not doing what they legally are supposed to do. In cases like that, if someone gets hurt, and I hope it won't be you and George, uh, can Lynette, John Crook, Russ the Sus be charged for false information to a law official. So recall what happens is George calls Levy County Sheriff, says, I've got a civil protection order. They're blocking my way into town hall. She actually went into town hall. Crook is outside of town hall, parked right next to the door. This is not okay. They say, okay, well, we'll try and get a deputy out there as fast as possible. We've got a shooting going on. And then two deputies do come out during the meeting. She's still in the meeting. 30 minutes later, they finally tell Lynette and Crook, you cannot be here. You have to go. After they ask Russ the sus because Crook tells the lie and says, oh, oh, well, we have a valid reason for being here. Let me emphasize this again. There is no valid or invalid reason to break the civil protection order. They cannot be there. The residents of Otter Creek could literally vote her in on town council, and she cannot be there if we are there, if George is there, Regardless if who's I am there, there first. It doesn't matter who's there first. They cannot legally be there for anything at any point in time. There are no exceptions to the rule. So can Lynette and John Crook and Russ the Sus be charged for false information to the law official? So Russ the Sus tells 
the deputies. Oh, yeah, she's here for a legitimate reason because she's going to be on the town council. Well, there's no way for her to be on the town council. No way for him to be on the town council. Neither have qualified by filing the, the, the legal paperwork. So w is there any consequences? We're in the process of exploring that currently with our lawyer to see what direction we go against Russ the Sus, Lynette, John Crook. But at a bare minimum, you have to understand that final hearing is in court March 1st. And now a judge who's been told, I'm paralyzed to my property. I'm scared to live. Who's literally going out and trying to intimidate George. Trying to intimidate at any point she can. Still posting, still breaking. So she put on this whole act in court. I'm paralyzed to my property. Yeah! And yet, we can see over and over again, she's willing to travel up to 100 miles to join you in your special day because she's the pole stripping minister of Otter Creek. But you got to give a donation. You got to give a donation to her turd purgatory where the turtles check in, but they never check out. David makes a good observation. He says, did anybody notice what Crook dropped when he got out of the Jeep to talk to Don. It looks like a firearm, but it wasn't. We've looked at that. As a matter of fact, once we got your uh, comment, David, and I've touched base on this in the previous video, but once we got your comment, we went back to the video footage. We expanded it. We looked at it. It's his vape pen. So we do know that it's his vape pen. He has his cell phone in his one hand. He drops his vape pen on the ground, talks to Don a little bit, then goes and picks up the vape pen. Now that in itself, you know, you, you already have a four-year-old that shouldn't be surrounded by that ki kind of thing anyway, right? Just for health reasons. I think we all understand. Whether you are a smoker, whether you are a vapor, whether you're not it doesn't really matter. We all understand whether you partake in it or not, you shouldn't have that around a child. I think we all know that. The health risks are not okay. Well, especially one that has a life-threatening well, metabolic disorder. Life-threatening? I mean, how many times do we have to hear it? We have to hear it all the time. Every post, every sentence in court. Life-threatening, 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 life-threatening. And yet... Vaping around yeah. her child could kill her. You know, it seems to me the most life-threatening thing in that child's life, I mean this wholeheartedly, and it's my opinion, take it for what it's worth, the most life-threatening thing in that child's life is her and him. Mech Shane has a pretty good question about rat. The rat. The rat, the son of Amanda Martin, the victim's advocate. So what's happened with the arrest of the POS, the POS, Amanda Martin's rug attic son? Well, most rug addicts around here end up at the uh, turd sanctuary. But as of right now, here's what has happened. There has been a little bit more development here. And so the, the uh, police officers now have all the film footage. So what we have also done is we subpoenaed all film footage from Walmart when Amanda Martin crossed paths with me at Walmart and then the Amanda footage of Amanda Martin leaving Walmart as well and then Rat showing up at Bubbacues and then leaving Bubbacues. So we have the full, full film story thus far. Now what's happened is the full report has been completed and Rat has uh, been non-existent. He's in hiding and he's not giving his side of what actually happened. Which really, do you really need his side of what happened? You're, you don't. You have video. The video doesn't so. lie. Video's never going to lie. You don't need the side of what I happened, which is called a sworn complaint, okay, or sworn testimony. You don't need what I have to say about it because it's literally on video. As a matter of fact, just an hour ago, we were watching it. We were watching the first interaction inside Bubba Q's. So um, that being said, now it's all in the hands of the DA, the district attorney. And the district attorney is going to say, as they look or this individual looks at the video footage and looks at the sworn complaint from me, is going to say, yep, this is an arrest warrant for Rat. Now, once that arrest warrant goes out, they still have to try and find him. Thus far, I haven't been able to find him. Where is he hiding out? The interesting part is Mama, no doubt, is trying to protect him, and Mama is married to a sheriff deputy 
Man, this just gets really, really messy, really, really quick. And it shows you the layers of disgusting corruption in this county. Mom of Bling's heart goes out for us right now. She asks, what can we do to help you guys? This is absolutely ridiculous. The good old boy club is in full effect there, starting with the chief. George could be in real danger. They won't do anything about it until it escalates. All right, Mama Bling, there are some things you can do. Number one, you understand, as we do, that Levy County Sheriff says, if you see something, say something. And I also understand that if you see something on a video, you should say something. Uh, there, there's no... There's no law keeping you from ever voicing your concern to the appropriate people. Now, let me back up a little bit. What you shouldn't do, you should never contact anybody that you see in our videos. Remember, this is the story of our lives, all right? And what we share is that story, and we share the facts, we share opinions, and we exercise our First Amendment right, freedom of speech and freedom of press as we do that. So keep that in mind. Never contact the actual individuals you see in the videos, but you can contact the authorities or the appropriate organization that can actually do something. So for example, with Judge Craig DeThomasis, we put out a post just a couple days ago on YouTube, in our community post, and uh, on our Facebook post that gave you a link where you could actually file a complaint on Judge DeThomasis. That's appropriate. If you are watching these hearings and you go, whoa, now let me emphasize, if, you. That doesn't mean everybody views it the same. There are some people who are watching the hearings and they go, I don't see any problem with it. If you don't see any problem with it, don't take any action. There's no action to take. It's only if you see a problem. If you see something, then you say something. So you can report him to the JQC, okay? And that's the oversight committee for judges. Now, I obviously see something. I'm in the midst of it, but I'm pretty biased, right? So there's no doubt I see something. It should be the average person looking at it and going, okay, I have no, I have no dog in this fight, but there's something wrong there. Uh, this judge is completely and totally biased. Then you can you can go ahead and you can file and you can file a complaint with the JQC. That's appropriate. If you see if you see a child that is um, obviously not being cared for appropriately, which we would call that neglect, and we could go on to even call it other words, right? Stronger words that I don't like to really say on YouTube because YouTube doesn't like those words. And no, YouTube is not banning my freedom of speech. YouTube has guidelines. As a matter of fact, I have guidelines. If you were in my building right now and you said some certain things and I told you, get out of my building, I don't want you talking that way, you can have and exercise your freedom of speech anywhere, anywhere outside of my building. But in my building, my rules. So you say, Jeremy, would you actually kick me out for saying certain things? Yeah. You say you got pictures of your uh, your small driveway in, in George's mouth and you're going to post them on Facebook like John Crook did. If you say things like um, uh, George and Jeremy purchased the schoolhouse because they're going to bring their radical Muslim family over. Terrorist. and And really, in essence, what he's saying is they are terrorists. Yeah, I'm going to kick you out. And I don't want to hear what you have to say. See, you have every freedom to say what you want to say. And I have every freedom to not hear it. Do you get that? Okay. So you can go to the appropriate routes, the appropriate people. That's one of the things that you can do. All right. So whether it be the judge, whether it being concerned for a child, whether it be concern over Otter Creek and the town council and what Russ the Sus is doing, there's an ethics committee in Tallahassee that you can report Russ the Sus. That's appropriate if and only if you are seeing things that you think aren't okay. If you're on the other side of it and you go, I don't see any problem with that. Well, there's no call to, there's no call to action. But if you're a person that goes, hey, this isn't okay. And I want to do something about it. It's always appropriate to contact the appropriate people. Never contact the others. Fast d, &D says, why can't they just do their job? Okay. Well, we could take this a whole lot of different ways, right? Uh, we could take this from the point of view of, is they meaning Lynette and Crook? Well, let's let's take that avenue. If, if he means Lynette and Crook, it's because they refuse to work. 
They're professional grifters, con artists, scam artists, trying to get any money they can, exploiting a child with GoFundMe after GoFundMe after GoFundMe going life-threatening, life-threatening, life-threatening. Why can't they just love the child for who the child is? I hope you understand. I'm just sharing my opinions here, right? Okay, so if you're talking about why can't they just do their job, well, they have every excuse in the book why they can't work. Disability, uh, it goes it goes on and on and on. Really, it does with these two. Wrapped up my leg to my crotch. We've heard that term over and over again. Their animals uh, are metabolic. Yeah, the animals are even metabolic. It's amazing. Somehow this metabolic disorder goes from people to animals and animals to people. There's so many excuses, it's ridiculous. The fact of the matter is they don't want to work. They don't want to do a job. So what they want to do is they want to come and try and scam and con George and I because they know that we've given money in the past. They thought they could get money in the present and in the future. It didn't happen. That's where this all blew up. Now, if you're talking about the town council, such as Russ the Sus and Don the Con, well, let's see. Why can't they do their job and just sit there? (laughs) Well... They want that hundred dollar check. They're children. They are literally adult children. It is seriously. It it is babysitting these two. Why can't they do their job? Well, they don't want to. That's what it comes down to. And they don't want anybody else to do the job on town council either. Because if they do, then then they have to submit to a different authority. By the way, this is really, I, I don't talk about, I don't talk about politics really, even though Otter Creek is a massive politic uh, issue in a town of a hundred. And I really don't talk about religion, even though that is the core foundation of my life. But you understand, this is the same, Russ and Suss are doing this, and Don the Con are doing the same thing with authority. They don't want Zim's authority. They don't want the lawyer's authority. They don't want anybody's authority that doesn't agree with them. Because that means you have to submit to that authority. And that's what we do as humans, too. If God is our creator, we are the creation, and God says, do this, don't do that. And we go, nope, I'm going to do it my way. How do we hear about it in culture? How about the you do you, boo-boo? If it feels good, just do it. Uh, if you If you can't have... If you can't have, what did that old song go? If you can't have, uh, uh, love the one you're with. Da, da. If you can't have the one you want, love the one you're with. I mean, we have songs, folk art, history, all about our wanting to not submit to our authority of our creator, right? You mean so, this isn't Burger King where they can have it their you, way? You can't have it your way, unfortunately. Oh. So Don and Russ don't want to submit to an authority, especially God, as we heard that with Don the Con, where he said the Bible need to be rewritten, okay? So that's why the God part and the religion ties in. He doesn't want to submit to the lawyer that he voted in, doesn't want to submit to Zim, doesn't even want to submit to God, thinks the Bible needs to be written. Now, I don't know who's going to rewrite it. Maybe Biscuit Boy will. And if he does, it's going to have a ton of misspellings in it. But if you're talking about the deputies, here's what goes on with the deputies. The deputies all blame it on the state uh, uh, state attorney. State attorney is blaming it on the deputies. They all play this blame game back and forth. And I got to, I got to, I, mean, I really, I got to echo your concern. Why can't they all just do their own job? From Lynette to Crook, stop trying to beg and get money from us, to the town council, get in there and do what's right for the people and the residents of the town and the sheriff. They already know we have civil protection orders. Stop blaming it on the attorney general. Attorney general, stop blaming it on the sheriff. Stop going, oh man, well, it's Ohio and this is Florida and Ohio has no jurisdiction. When Ohio has every bit of jurisdiction, Just do your job. Jill Gout says, so Russell is the new authority. (laughs) Apparently, Russ the Sus is the new authority on whether John Crook has a legitimate reason to be outside of town hall, huh? Well, Russ the Sus thinks he's the authority. I just mentioned he doesn't want another authority. And then she goes on to say, I can't believe that cop asked him even. I agree. Very disrespectful, the whole dang thing. Which, by the way, why would the cop even ask Russ the Sus? Because Russ the Sus is nothing more than a council member. He's not the mayor. He should have asked Belinda. He has no authority. He should have went and asked Belinda, who actually has authority to talk about who's qualified to be sat Mm -hmm. on those council seats. Okay? So... 
Uh, I cannot believe the cop even asked him. Very disrespectful, the whole thing. Is Florida just waiting for somebody to get hurt and then what? Yes. Well, the answer is yes. They they literally will never act until somebody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. And that is... Um, that's it's a tra tragedy. It's I mean, it really is. It's it's ridiculous. And then what? They're going to find themselves in the biggest lawsuit the state has ever been in, and and very much so. That could happen before someone gets hurt because they are truly, they are truly right now. Judge Craig DeThomas has taken away my my civil rights. I, I hope you understand that my civil rights have been taken away from me. My First Amendment, my Second Amendment, my Fifth Amendment, my Eighth. Amendment, it, it could go on and on. I, we could go through all the amendments. And some of you right now are looking up the amendments. How did he do that? Well, we'll get into that in another video. And then Jill goes on to say, yay for TC being served. Surprised he didn't get arrested for speaking back to the cop. He was served and he dodged it for days and days and days and days until the process server wait for him at his home, which is not in Otter Creek. Keep in mind that Biscuit Butt doesn't record his own town hall meeting because there isn't one. The only reason he's recording town hall meetings is because he saw a way to make money off the coattails of what the hails, period. And now he's being served because of it. And he still hasn't followed all of the cease and desist that he actually got, which means he's gonna get his fat biscuit butt sued. And the reality is this, he's gonna lose mama's house and everything else when daddy gets out of jail this December. Daddy who's in jail 20 years, attempted murder after kidnapping, who in his statement to the police said, whether you hold me here one week or 20 years, when I get out, I'm going to get it right the next time. Chassel says, doesn't the town of Otter Creek follow Robert's rules of agenda? All right. You have to understand that Robert's rules of order is a suggestion. It's not law. Okay, so there are things that I like about Robert's rule of orders and there are things that I go, eh, I don't like that part. So, for example, what I truly like in a, in a council or a board meeting is to bring something to the table, bring it for discussion, and then have a motion, a second motion, and then all in favor. But in Robert's rule of order, you bring the motion and then second it, and then you have a discussion, and then it's all in favor. So I don't like Robert's rule of orders in that regard because how do you know what you're actually bringing to the table if you haven't discussed it yet? It's the discussion that actually clarifies the motion. So Robert's rule of order is just a guideline. It's a suggestion. It's a opinion. It's a, it's not law. They can go whatever direction they want. The, the, the key point is they do want to exercise order to get to that destination. Paul McFarland says, man, these deputies are just giving you more and more and more evidence of incompetence for your lawsuit. And that's the truth. You know, there have been some phenomenal deputies, some truly phenomenal deputies who have taken our phone call serious. And there have been some other deputies who have not taken it seriously. There, there are some on the Levy County Sheriff Force that have failed miserably. And there are some rising stars who, who we would trust and, and we would consider um, trustworthy and honest individuals. But the fact that George is at a town hall meeting and every single deputy knows our civil protection orders. As a matter of fact, many of them are even watching right now. They know our civil protection orders. They know these two, have, without exception, cannot be within 500 feet of ourselves. They just continue to give more video evidence and video evidence and video evidence and video evidence of their incompetence and the grounds for one of the state's biggest lawsuits ever. Suzanne wants to know, is Russ the Sus mentally challenged? She says, no, this is a serious question. It's an honest question. I'm not trying to be funny at all. Well, let me share what I do know about Russ the Sus. I do know that Russ the Sus obviously is financially challenged. He cannot wisely be a steward of money. He, he just can't. He doesn't know how to do it. I also know he, um, he loves to runk. Uh, he loves strong drink. Okay, and he is... He spends his money on strong drink. All that money that he can't 
he can't uh, figure out what to do with or how to actually manage it, it, it goes to a uh, strong drink, okay? So we know that about Russ the Sus as well. Now, has all that strong drink affected him up here? I, I don't doubt it. I mean, it's got to have some kind of effect on you, right? There, there's, there's all kinds of physical effects that it does to your body. Alcohol-induced dementia. So it could be, it could be a number of different things medically, or the fact may just be he's dumb. He's literally just dumb. Seriously, okay. Let's 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 look at this a little bit. Let's look at this a little bit. He's he's the mayor of Otter Creek and he tells residents to sue him? Oh, that's right. He's on the council. He tells a resident to hit him? Okay. Um, new resident moves in. He steals from that resident, charges more than half for water. All right, let's keep going on and on. Um, we've got Russ the Sus. He don't do emails. He literally thinks that Belinda sent the town agenda for the meeting to his spam folder that he had no clue what it was. How in the world can anyone in this day and age not know what an inbox and a spam folder is with email? Now, I get it. He says he don't do email, but it ain't that difficult to figure it out. Even the dumbest of the dumb people can figure out email and know that spam folder you can't just send an email to a spam folder. This is the same individual who keeps holding illegal meetings outside while it's being filmed, incriminating himself even further. Same individual who's taking public property out of the building, the recordings of the meetings. I Come on. Is, is there something mentally wrong? There's something completely wrong with this individual. I think he's beyond dumb beyond ignorant because he's fixing to leave the meeting. First of all, to fix something means to correct it. When you fix something, you're making it better. Why don't you just say, I'm going to leave the meeting. I'm fixing to leave this meeting in Odor Creek. He can't even say otter. He calls it odor. And yeah, he always has this face like he's smelling his own farts too. And maybe that's what he enjoys. Maybe he's so off up here. All he does is sniff his own farts and get strong drink. The ironic part is others who are not blessed in the brain, like Russ the Sus, they flock together. Birds of a feather flock together. You've got Lynette, no brains, even though she said that's how my brain works. Crook, who's another uh, lover of the strong drink. You've got people across the world. For example, Nebraska, you got Cole Allen, who is literally trying to fight for Lynette and Crook. This man... This man has to register where he is. Why? Because of child, you fill in the blank, ography. This man who isn't a man, who's despicable, who's horrifically done things that he's been charged with, trying to purchase child, you fill in the blank, ography. And he's online standing up for a child, a four-year-old. You know, I'd be extremely concerned if that's who my supporter was. Beyond concerned if that's who my supporter was. I don't want those type of supporters. I don't need those type of supporters. Again, birds of a feather flock together. You got a, you got a, you got a busted case of biscuits that can't even spell the word biscuit. That's how pathetic, how ignorant some of these fools are. So, yeah, they're not very well blessed in the brains. And frankly... The driveways are small too. Lil Bunny says, oh, so Lynette says her daughter does not wear diapers, but a four-year-old most likely is going to have to go to the bathroom sometime in that many hours sitting in that vehicle outside. Did she just let her sit in her own pee? Mm -hmm. That's the answer. Yes, absolutely. I think Russ paid them to sit there all that time to start crap. Well, you're absolutely right that um, it was all pre-planned. Now, for Russ to pay, this man doesn't have money. This man doesn't have money. Most, 
there are precious people here, okay? But the reality is there isn't a lot of money in this area. So Russ the Sus is not one that's going to pay somebody. While it was pre-planned and why, yes, she absolutely let the child sit in her own urine, which is horrific to even think about. It's horrific to even think that a child is literally in that vehicle for that many hours, over four hours. Well, especially since she claims the child has to be with her 24-7. Uh, yeah, she can never leave the child. Never, never, ever leave the child. But the story from Russ the Sus to the deputies that John Crook was going to be appointed and like Net was going to be appointed. So keep in mind, uh, is this child going to be appointed as well for another seat? Or what's going on? You know, who's with the child now? The child can't be with anybody and they can never be left alone. And the lies just spin out of control, completely and totally out of control. And yeah, it's horrific that she's in that vehicle. He's vaping the entire time. They place this child in the middle of this huge... <sighs> They knew the deputies were going to be called. They absolutely know. They absolutely know that the sheriff are going to be there. And they intentionally and they place the child, child in the middle of it and mm -hmm. expose her to all of this. No child should ever, ever be exposed to this kind of stuff. This is adult stuff for adults to deal with. No child should be like, why are there, why are there cops surrounding my vehicle right now? And what do they do? Literally thrust her in the middle of it. It's, it's insane to even think about because no rational, loving parent would ever place a child in that position. Robbie makes a good observation as well, says, by disobeying the civil protection orders, it shows how much she actually cares about the child. And then Robbie goes, I think it's Robin. Ugh. <laughs> All right, you're right, it's Robin. And Robin goes, ugh. All right, let alone with that crazy man, or so she says, for hours. Okay, so we all know Lynette has posted over and over and over and told everybody over and over and over again that Crook is abuser, okay? is She announced that within the first three minutes I met her in person. Abuser. Not only that, she has also posted that he has financially... Uh, rapist her, um, that he is a rug dealer, that he is a runk, that, I mean, the list just goes on. A filthy runk. On and on. So yeah, you're completely right, Robin. The fact that any parent would place the child in that type of position shows you where that parent's values are. Lynette's values were more about trying to intimidate George and myself, trying to have the Levy County Sheriff deputy show up, trying to be right instead of loving a four-year-old. And that, my friends, is completely and totally wrong. Witty has a question about the election. Says, well, doesn't there still have to be an election for any possible write-ins? No. <laughs> Come on, man. Witty. Are you not paying attention? Like sometimes when I answer these questions, I feel like you ask the question just to get attention, okay? Because this has already been covered. They have to be qualified with Form 6. You can't just go in and go, well, I'm going to write Jeremy Hales in. I never qualified to be elected, period. There is no write-ins. You have to qualify now with Form 6 to actually have a seat on council, period. You can't put Mickey Mouse, you can't put Jeremy Hales, you can't put George Hales, you can't put anybody on well, a write-in. It's a new law effect of the first of the year. No write-ins. Every candidate must be pre-qualified to be voted on. And remember, five council seats. Zim stays. Russell's done in April. Don's done in April. So now there's four seats. There are two seats that get one-year appointments and then two seats that get two-year appointments. And let's see if I can do this, see if my fingers will work. Nope. So Don, Stuart Stewart, and Laura Mott applied for the two-year seats. 
they have to run in an election because there's three people running for two seats. Carl and Joe both ran for the one-year seats. That's two people, two seats. They automatically get seated because there is no election needed. There's no third person. They automatically win. They don't have to be voted on. They win. They can get no votes. They win. They're qualified. So there's no such thing as a write-in anymore. Miss M.M. Bell has a good question. Was Russ the sus pledging the allegiance to his phone? All right. <laughs> well, first of all, Russ the sus has stated, or at least Don the Khan has stated to us, that Russ the sus served in the military. And if that is true, I have nothing to verify that. If that is true, what a gross display of unpatriotism as the Pledge of Allegiance is going on, and he is not pledging the allegiance, he's standing and he's fiddling. Now, what he's fiddling with is a recorder, and he's fiddling with it to send it to Shart, who's a nobody, who desperately wants to be a relevant somebody, but never will be. And is it also the same individual that keeps getting these individuals further and further and further more incriminated. So, is he pledging allegiance to his phone? Well, he's he's definitely not pledging the allegiance to God or the country. And we see that with Don, too. I don't think he's going to pledge allegiance to any God. He wants the Bible rewritten. So his allegiance, where does it stand? Russ the Sus' allegiance probably is not for God, and it's probably not for country, and it's probably not even to his phone. If I had to guess, knowing everything that I know about Russ and hearing everything that I've heard about Russ, as he's abused his power inappropriately with the females in the town, as he continues to drive around like a creeper and stalk females in the town, Russ the Sus's only allegiance is to Russ the Sus. Terry Wright says, I want an interview with Belinda. I want to know exactly what Lynette said to her. Well, Terry, we know what Lynette said in the meeting over and over and over again. You lied to me. Listen, we don't need an interview with Belinda. Leave Belinda alone. Let her do her job. Never call or contact Town Hall, as I've told you in the past. Don't encourage others to go to Town Hall. Miss Belinda needs to take care of her job and her work responsibilities. Lynette claims everybody has lied to her. And at what point is Lynette going to claim that her own lawyer, Joshua Silverman, has lied to her? I mean, she's already stated that her, that her lawyer told her that she could be there. So when she gets arrested in Ohio or doesn't show in Ohio and then there's an arrest warrant, uh, is she going to start saying that her attorney, Joshua, he lied to me. She's got to blame someone. Yep. Not only that, she's probably going to start putting signs up all in Gainesville, calling him some kind of rapist. A nursey makes me think of um, Warner. What was the Warner Brothers words? Hello, nurse. Says, hey, nursey, thank you for bringing awareness to the criminal stuff going on in this uh, back Word, I'm just going to say backward, backward area of our country. Uh, sir, wh what about the Attorney General's office? Shouldn't that office be aware of the crazy people in this country? That's nursing. That's, that's the crazy part. They are aware. They know everything. They have our civil protection orders. They know what's going on in court. Frankly, they're probably watching the show. It's the news. I mean, who wouldn't watch the news when it's in your own backyard? That's what this is. Levy County's backyard. Otter Creek used to be the cream of the crop. It was the spot where business happened and social events happened. And it, this was the area where there were more people than anywhere else. And what did these residents do? They killed it. And they're continuing to kill it. And do they know? Yeah. They absolutely know what they're doing. They absolutely know what's going on. And the fact still remains, they just don't care. Their hands aren't tied. Don't believe the excuse, well, I can't do anything, or Ohio doesn't have jurisdiction, or they told me to do this, or they... They don't care. That's what it amounts to. They just simply don't care. Robert Valdez has a great, great uh, question here. Why does the sheriff have to ask the state attorney when this crime, breaking the permanent injunction, or 
what Ohio calls a civil protection order is happening. With that logic, does the sheriff also have to ask the state attorney when a bank is being robbed yes. before they do anything? Yeah, we're That's learning that real quick. the logic. How insane, right? Laws being broken. I can't do anything until I call the state attorney. Banks being robbed. Can't do anything. I gotta call the state attorney. State attorney's out to dinner with his wife. Sorry, you gotta wait to hear from. Him. But the robbers are gone. Crook brandish. Oh my goodness. Gun, has we got, to the state we got crook with a pew pew pew. Gotta go to the state attorney. I mean, literally, I'm assaulted in a restaurant. It's gotta go to the district attorney. Like, how insane is this? A crime is being committed, and officers have the authority to actually enforce and do something about it. And here, all we hear is, it's got to go to the higher-ups. got to go to the higher-ups. I mean, literally, does somebody... Unless you're somebody, bleeding or dead. If somebody dies, do they have to call the state attorney? I mean, really, at that point, isn't it too late? Isn't the point not only... <laughs> you would think that the point is to not let it get to that point, right? Like, they've already... They've already empowered Lynette and Crook. By not enforcing, they have actually empowered them to continue to break. Now, on the positive side, Ohio is going to keep them accountable and hold them accountable. Even if Florida keeps saying, nope, <laughs> we ain't doing nothing, Ohio will absolutely keep them accountable. But to what point? What happens if... We've already know, I've already had a firearm pointed at me. We already know there's been a rug addict there who was on a high trip and was shooting randomly into the neighborhood as I'm driving down the road, okay? At what point? My death? Now, you may th find this morbid, okay? But this is just the truth of the reality of the situation. I have three children. My oldest is 24, just going to be turning 25. And before I left to come to Florida, I gave her specific instructions. It's dangerous down here. I don't want you guys down here. I want you safe up there. To the point of my ex-wife and I do not get along. But I'm texting my ex-wife saying, listen, these freaks, there is, there is literally a man named Cole Allen right now online putting all your information and all of our children's information out online. This guy has to register in Nebraska because he's a child fill in the blank. And me going, the only safe place I know is my home up north and it's all fenced in and nobody can get to you. And while I'm down here, take the kids and get them safe. That's the level of this, right? I hope you understand that I had to put things in place and in order before I even came down, telling my oldest, you're the executor, you know what to do, here's one thing I want you to do, here's where all the passwords are, this is who you have to talk to, this is the, this is the number, I put it here for you, and have everything in place before I come down here. Now, if you don't think that's a little insane, coming down here for the winter where it's, we're supposed to have rest, and we're supposed to have respite, and we're supposed to have fun, and it's supposed to be snowbirding in Florida, the place where people come and vacation. These people are crazy. And what is the Levy County Sheriff doing? Well, apparently they have to call the, the state attorney if a bank gets robbed as well. Mm -hmm. Biggest, our biggest concern, we're gonna get shot.